mnemonics for anesthesia, especially the nervous system, circulation, it can be really, really hard to come by, right, Ivar? Yes, yes, it can. Well, that's what we're here for. So welcome, everybody, to our first episode of the Medical Mnemonics Podcast, the Magnetic Medical Mnemonics Podcast. This is Dr. Anthony Metivier from MagneticMaryMethod.com, and I love using mnemonics, and I have memorized a fair amount of medical terms and anatomy and so forth, but I'm not a medical doctor myself, and that's why Ivar is joining me. You are a nurse, and now you are moving towards getting a degree in anesthesia, if I understand. Is that right, Ivar? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm a nurse. I've uh, I've been a nurse for three years, and now I'm taking a, a master's degree in uh, anesthesia over, over the next two years. Wonderful, wonderful. And this, you uh, use mnemonics a lot in order to help you pass your previous degrees. I I do. Uh, I did when I did my bachelor thesis, uh, and I've been doing it uh, these past uh, three years to pass courses and uh, understand anatomy way better, and also to to bring it out to the clinic. Fantastic. So if you are watching this and you would love to have more ideas about medical mnemonics, make sure to hit that thumbs up, get subscribed. And thank you, Ivar, for joining me to do this because good mnemonic, medical mnemonics are so useful and powerful. Even if you're just doing it for interest sake, you want to be able to know more about your body or myself, I'm interested because I'm writing a novel where a, a blind memory expert is trying to learn as much as possible and maybe to push conventions. It's a novel, of course, <laughs> whether or not uh, oh, awesome. in reality, you you would have somebody be able to be a surgeon. Um, I don't know, but nonetheless, I'm going to make it happen. And I want to know as much about anatomy as possible uh, so I can write it, you know, as realistically as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. Uh, oof, anatomy, uh, you have to take it in doses. You can't have it all, <laughs> all at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it is uh, something to chunk and chunk down as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. All right, so without further ado, what are we looking at here? Uh, you have a wonderful diagram that you've drawn with your own hand, which is a yeah, great learning yeah. strategy, of course. Yeah, it is. Um, and this is uh, a nerve cell. Uh, and I've drawn this because I want to show the, the effect of, uh, of our local anesthetics. So here we, we can see the cell body with a sort of orange part in the middle. Mm. And it has these dendrites, which are these antenna on the side. So when you talk about dendrites, is this the same term as dendritic spine or is a dendritic spine something else? Actually, I'm a bit unsure. Uh, I'm studying in, uh, in Norwegian, so dendr dendritic spine is a bit unfamiliar to me. Okay. Uh, well, nonetheless, but, I, I I think they look. Uh, I'm getting that term from Barbara Oakley, who <laughs> who did learning out alone. Ah. So that's uh, in one of her diagrams. But uh, i was just okay, wondering okay. If, if that that term comes from them looking a little bit like uh, the the spine of a of a tree. You know, uh, sometimes you you call those. I think oh. you call you know little you know spikes that come out of uh, trees, uh, spines, I, I think. I'm not sure where that exactly yeah, comes yeah. from. But uh, dendritic oh, spine might up, refer but... to something else. It might might be, but I'm, I'm not sure at all. I've <laughs> just, <I'm> just memorized it. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, okay, yeah. so the dendrites. Yeah, the dendrites. Um, so as you can see, I've drawn other sort of nerve endings that connect to the dendrites. So other nerve cells talk to this nerve cell uh, through the dendrites. And they can be inhibitory and exhibitory, meaning they can send a positive charge or a negative charge. And I won't go super deep into this, but the cell has, has a static like neg negative charge. It's about minus 70 millivolts. And if there's enough exhibitory, stimulus, the cell will reach a tre threshold value, which opens, I don't know if you can see very good, but the voltage-gated uh, sodium channels. 
and they they polarize the cell so you get a a, a new uh, tension there so you get 40 uh, millivolts mm -hmm. which sets up an action potential goes through the axon through the myelin and ends up in the nerve ending and then communicating to another nerve cell so on a test and i want you you would need to know voltage gated sodium channels and yep, yep. these numbers that you put there. So it was it 40 you said, cause I see a 70, but. Yeah. Um, minus 70. That's mm -hmm. the, that's the starting like a uh, mean value of the cell and 40 is what it gets when it starts, uh, and, uh, letting sodium ions into the cell. What I've noted as NA plus here. So, Without the voltage gated sodium channel, you won't get to 40. Okay. Got it. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but in terms of yeah. in terms of raw mnemonics, we should pause here, right? Because yeah, yeah, we should. People who don't have a number system would want to maybe think about developing that. So when you say minus Absolutely. 70, I'm already thinking of my aunt Cassie. Why? Because in yeah. In a PAO system, seven is K, zero is S, and you yep. know for the minus, I can have her getting a sword into her into her stomach or whatever, and then forty ah, that's is that politician from times past, uh, Condoleezza Rice, and oh yeah, you're right. Notice the pattern here. So seven is K, zero is a S or a soft C sound. So Cassie, and then when forty has another zero. And zero is S and so forth. So that's why it's rice, soft C, right? So those sounds, S, Z, S, those are yeah. zero sounds. So you see the pattern like Cassie, rice, 40, Y4, because R is four in this system. So if you have something like volt gated sodium channels, you now have, if you have this system, you would maybe not use Condoleezza rice, but you might use Reese. I think his name was from use, uh, Terminator. Wasn't his name Reese? Yeah, yeah. Any word that has that combination will give you the image 40. And Reese is even better here than Condoleezza Rice because that whole idea of like volts has a lot to do with time travel and all that sort of stuff. And now you can imagine him coming through the <laughs> yeah. volt gate and a bunch of salt is pouring down on his head. So you got like volt gated sodium channels and you're you're so involved in this image right around that part on your image there. 40, wow, you don't want to change the channel, right? So now you got like yeah. ma magnetic gold right there just in a couple of seconds because you have a 00 to 99 PAO number system and those numbers yeah, are, yeah. are locked and loaded, ready to go. It's really powerful. Uh, I use Ross from Friends. Oh, yeah, that's good too. It's my 40. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I kiss the rock band for 70. Oh man, that is amazing! I gotta add that to mine. <laughs> Why didn't yeah. I do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They really. Paul Stanley uh, is here in Australia right now. Is he? Yeah. 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 Cool. Cool. Actually, uh, it's a pain doing this. Uh, this in English, just with the voltage gated sodium channels, because uh, sodium in Norwegian is uh, natrium, and channels is port. So you got natrium port, which is Natalie Portman. It's ah, it's perfect. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah <laughs> well that's great that's great thank you for uh yeah, yeah. For, for tying in the other language because sometimes people ask you know can i use this if english isn't my mother tongue and of course it uh but it doesn't it's not necessarily obvious but yeah it doesn't have to do with your mother tongue it has to do with the relationship between sounds and images ideas concepts celebrities and you know i'm glad you mentioned natalie portman because that's a name, right? It's international. It's not locked into any particular language. Uh, so I haven't had a chance to use you yet, Ivar, but you know, one day I'm <laughs> sure I'm going to come across something that has that sound and uh, you'll be the first person yeah. I think of as an image to associate. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, when you, you do this, you start collecting names just to have them in your memory bank and, uh, and use it. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, awesome. So another thing to point out here is, yeah. We can use a memory palace for this kind of stuff, but when you have this kind of drawing, you've drawn it yourself, you've done it personally, so it's personalized, and yep. this kind of thing is essentially a mind map memory palace come together, 
because yeah. that information is more or less at 12 o'clock. So if I was memorizing this, I would then move to the one o'clock position or the two o'clock or three o'clock, whatever you want to call it, going in a clockwise fashion. And the next thing I'm going to memorize would be this nodes of Ranvier, or I'm not sure how you say that, but you know, that would yeah, be my nodes of Ranvier. Yeah. Yeah. That would be my next, uh, my next choice. And I'm just thinking that this, my, this drawing is a mind map memory palace and just traveling it in that circular sort of section, which is going to, uh, or that circular path, which is going to enable recall rehearsal later. Yeah. Yeah. I see that. Uh, I actually, I, I used to draw these. Uh, I usually draw these when I have memorized. And I see how much I understand of my own mnemonics. So right. I, I memorize and then I try to draw it out. Uh, so I sort of do it in the opposite order, but it definitely works like that. Yeah. Well, that's a great strategy too. So another thing about mnemonics is that they're almost always bi-directional. You can do it both ways. But from my right. perspective, learning from you and your journey, which is what we're doing in this series, I have the opportunity of just turning this into a memory palace. And then later to yeah. use the power of reflective thinking, to use the power of spaced repetition. I'm just going to look back in my mind, not this thing, but in the in my mind, how your picture looked and just travel it. And I'll be thinking, okay, so it was minus 70, 40 voltage gated sodium channels, you know, all that sort of stuff. Like it's already uh, <laughs> starting to sink in. And then I would go next to, I haven't made an image yet for nodes of Ranvier, but I would just place them right on yeah. this image as if this was a memory palace. Yeah. Yeah. So do you awesome. have images that you use already for nodes of Ranvier? Yeah, I'm lucky. I have a friend called Ranvay. Um, so she, she is nodding a lot and tying these little knots. Nah, it's not the best, but uh, yeah, it worked. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. I would think first of Ran speaking of number systems, because Akira Kurosawa has that wonderful movie run. And so now I could think of 42, which is my image or Ran is my image for 42, specifically that samurai movie. Yep. Um, and then my last name is Metivier. So VA, I could think of myself in this ah. image. And then of course for nodes, I mean, in the matrix, I guess, they have a lot of nodes. I, you might call those portals on the yeah. back of their necks. Those, those are kind of like nodes or nodules. Um, yeah. Maybe yeah. something like that. So a samurai putting his sword with with into my Metivier or Renvier, run the samurai into the node, nodes of Renvier. I might do that. That's way better. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's all just practice, right? But you, yeah, you're yeah. you're yeah, right to so, use so a friend if you have somebody whose name is very similar. I mean, that's a great strategy. Yeah, you know, Ranve when you have Ranvier, ah, it's pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. Okay, so what's next? Um. Well, we're gonna. It's a bit hard to understand this, but there's the action potential, which is its positive charge. It travels through the long piece that's covered in myelin, what we call the axon, mm -hmm. and it's going to end up in the nerve ending or the presynaptic membrane. Uh, okay. And these nerve cells are really long. So these axons may, might go from your, uh, from your brain all the way down to your spine, and then have one of these nerve endings. So nerve cells are really long, and they have to transmit signal over a long distance. And it's the myelin sheet that helps them do that. And they do that through the nodes of Ranvier and saltatory conduct, ah, which is hard terms. Sorry, say that one last one again. Saltatory conduct. Saltatory conduct. Saltatory uh, conduct. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Conduction. I uh, oh, conduction. Okay, yeah. Uh, con conduction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Conduction, of course. Uh, yeah, I was going to say conduit might make more sense, but conduction. Okay, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, hold on. So an axon can be so long that it goes from your brain down to your back? Yeah. 
Wow. And then again, from your back to your toe. So we're talking about uh, one cell being a meter here. Really? Wow, that's amazing. For some reason, yeah. I thought these were all like microscopic in your brain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. That's what you think. And when you, you draw them like this, you know, the cell body is microscopic. So uh, I'm fooling you a bit here with a short axon. Yeah, it's a very short axon if it can go from your brain to your toes. <laughs> amazing. Yeah, yeah. So it, it has to go really far. And the speed of the, of the action potential, it varies with how much myelin you have. Right. Which is why when you learn something new, you want to do it again and again and again. And that's the process that causes uh, the cells around the axon to create more myelin. Is there a mnemonic you had for myelin? Uh, yeah, uh, M is, uh, I got Mike Milligan from uh, Fargo. I don't know if you've seen that series. He's really cool. I've seen the movie, um, but not the series. Oh, the series is great. Mike Milligan there, he's uh, sort of this gangster uh, character in the second season. And he's, um, he's playing the violin and he's greased up his hands with, with uh, I don't know if you have that word in English, uh, Vaseline. Vaseline? Yeah, Vaseline, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if you're a violinist, that will be a very annoying image. <laughs> yeah, it would. <laughs> I think when I memorized so, the word myelin and myelin sheaths, I had the Michelin tire man uh, saying, no, Michelin they're mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. Tires are good for the axon. Yeah. Yeah. Those nodes. Uh, uh, if the nodes are those blue things that kind of looks like tires wrapped around the axon there. The nodes are actually the the space between the blue things. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. the blue things is the myelin, and then the nodes yeah. are the space between. Okay, I get it. I see where your arrow yeah. is pointing now. Yeah, yeah. And this is sort of technical, but what happens is uh, you get a, a positive charge in the cell body going down to the neck of the axon. And then there's something called a threshold value. Did I mention that before? Uh, I think you did uh, when uh, okay. you were mentioning the, uh, but just when we were getting started. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, if the charge alone was gonna go through the whole axon, it would use a lot of time and it wouldn't be fast enough. We have unmyelated axons and they the, the signal moves about two meters per second. And with myelin, it moves 100 meters per second, so up to 50 times faster. And I'm not sure if I understand this uh, perfectly. Remember, I'm still learning. Um, but in the cell, the threshold value is around minus 50 millivolt. And in the axon, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's lower. So you don't have to have that much, that much influence to affect the action, uh, uh, the voltage gated sodium channels in the axon. Mm -hmm. So what happens is close to the first myelin, you get a positive charge, and then through saltatory conduction, that charge moves through the end to the end of that myelin, and in the nodes of Ranvia it reaches the threshold potential or the threshold value and then opens voltage-gated sodium channels there, which whew, creates a positive charge and then through saltatory conduct conduction again through the, to the next node of Ranvier and poof, 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 poof. Okay. So I don't know if that was sort of explanatory, but... Yeah, I'm not sure. I've I... seen uh, some imaging of how this kind of works. And I don't know if it was showing that process, but I saw something that I think looks a little bit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you're studying this on a bachelor's level, it's no need to go this deep. It's enough to know of myelin and uh, nodes of Ranvier and that they increase the speed. Should I say something about why this is uh, important to uh, anesthetists? Yeah, I think uh, knowing your why is a great mnemonic. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is, and it's really simple because uh, we use um, 
local and uh, regional anesthetics and uh, and also general anesthetics but what local does is uh, you you inject something close to a nerve and it through diffusion finds the nerve cells and attaches itself to the voltage gated sodium channels uh, which means when you reach your threshold value in the cell it won't fire because the threshold value is what opens the voltage gated sodium channels and now you can't so it's this really simple little molecule it's so elegant uh, and nice and sits right here in the voltage uh, yeah in the sodium channels there and just keeps keeps them from opening and keeps the the cell body from reaching this 40 millivolt uh, level really? and it's dose dependent so there are millions of these uh, channels and you have to get a lot of them right and uh, if you have uh, the dose you uh, it reach it raises the threshold right and this is, of course, toxic, so you can't have a too high dose, but yeah, the doctors will uh, know <laughs> how to deal with that. And is the term but, for when everything is functioning as it should be, is that what you call homeostasis or is that something else? Yeah, yeah. And that, which is essentially the job of the nervous system and the endocrine system to maintain homeostasis, right? right. Uh, the nervous system does it over the short term. And uh, the endocrine system does it more of a long-term regulation. So yeah, homeostasis, very good keyword here. Perfect. Um, yeah. I'm glad I asked. No stupid questions, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 really. No stupid questions. Uh, which is sort of why uh, uh, we should talk about the circulatory system uh, later. Because when you inhibit something... There, there are probably other nerves there as well. So you have, you want to inhibit the sensory nerves that makes you not feel pain, right? Mm. But there's also autonomic nerves that sense uh, a little stimulus to your blood vessels and the smooth cells there. So if if that goes away, your blood vessels dilate and you have a problem with your blood pressure. Yikes! Yikes! Ooh. Yeah, right. We don't want that. Have you used mnemonics ever in, in your career to figure out the different, you know, the normal range for blood pressure? Or did you learn that through rote or? Just through through rote, yeah. Um, I, I uh, usually use mnemonics to sort of flag out what's dangerous. So I've worked a bit in the ambulance. Mm. Um, so when uh, memorizing with blood pressure i sort of memorized okay 180 because above 180 you start to use uh, lose the brain's auto regulation and it can be damaged by higher pressure but all the the values beneath that now i've just sort of seen a lot of patients and picked it up right right okay uh but you could use a number system <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I think if you're a neonate, it's like, well, maybe not your circulation, but your heart rate is supposed to be something like 80 to 110, I think. Um, yeah. I think I memorized that <laughs> using mnemonics at one point, uh, the neonate. But I just got started with that uh, that whole heart realm and thinking about pediatrics and all that sort of stuff. So, um, Oh, really? Yeah. like I, I never knew until just recently that there's a difference between a neonate and an infant and a toddler. And then- you know, that that's actually categories. <laughs> so it's kind of like yeah. just starting to come into my awareness um, that then there would be different heart rates for each of those stages, different circulatory uh, yeah. numbers that you have to memorize. Anyway, really fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's also on my curriculum. So uh, we'll probably get to it sometime. Uh, all right, all right. It's, it's, uh... <laughs> I've got a slight head run. I just got to get those mnemonics a little deeper into my system. Yeah, 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 great. Cool. Okay, so we're over here. Yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, cell body medicine, and right? homeostasis. Yeah, yeah. Threshold and the local uh, anesthetic. Right. So I think this is a really, really nice example example about how anatomy on the micro level 
really leads to understanding on the macro level here because it's 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 really beautiful this uh, small molecule just sitting in the in the channel there so if you don't understand all the all the things with the tr threshold value and the action potential and the roads of RANV nodes of RANV a you can still sort of understand that okay it doesn't reach the required voltage hmm. perfect right yeah. What about action potential? Is that something you just naturally remember, or did you make an image to help you with that? Yeah, ah, I made a great image. <laughs> um, for A, I got uh, Anakin Skywalker. Nice. And he's up in this uh, huge uh, director's chair, and he says action with this clipboard thing. And uh, my P is Pippin from Lord of the Rings. Uh, and so he's with Anakin up there and Anakin throws him down from this really high chair. Uh, and up there, Pippin will have a lot of potential energy, right? Mm. So he loses his potential energy when being thrown from the chair by Anakin. That's great. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Often for things with action, I use action Jackson. I don't know if, if you ever saw that movie. Oh no, sorry. Uh, I don't know if it's, though. I don't know if I recommend it or not, but anyway, it's in my memory from when I was a kid. <laughs> Action Jackson. <laughs> and for potential, cool. I don't know uh, Lord of the Rings that well, but I might use uh, maybe the Pope, uh, something yeah. like that. Uh, and he would be basically token on something. Po token, potential. Uh, maybe a, <laughs> like a, a big, uh, you know, they sometimes use that word dime bag or whatever. <laughs> So, yeah, he's got like 10, 10 for dime potential. And uh, the, ah. the, the, the weed is particularly potent, something like that. Because to me, the, the Pope smoking weed, really potent weed, <laughs> is like a great, that's very easy to remember. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's good. With Action Jackson. Like that's the good. Action Jackson is, is token up and handing it to the Pope. He's like, whoa, get, yeah. the, po get the potential of this, buddy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, and for people listening uh, this is the reason to use memory techniques it's super fun uh, yeah <laughs> this... it really is and it's it really gives you great memory exercise yeah, yeah all right so what what okay. what's what's next you can maybe go uh, go through the next uh, yeah yeah the next slide this is what happens between the neurons which is uh, for a lot of students, it's a bit of uh, ah, this. This is uh, complicated, but we can break it into five steps, and uh, I think mnemonics are perfect here. And what I, again, what I did is I memorized five keywords, uh, and then I checked myself if I could write a summary of it, and then I drew this picture. So. Uh, the first keyword is action potential, which uh, we got Anakin there and uh, Action Jackson and uh, the Pope and the whole uh, the whole crew. Yeah. And it's moving from the myelin, as you see in the top there, and into the nerve ending. And the space is really small here, so you don't need new myelin sheets. This is the just the end of the ax uh, of the axon, right? And it, it broadens out. And then again, you have uh, vault gated calcium channels. These are calcium, not sodium. Okay, yeah. So that was my second uh, second mnemonic, calcium. Um, calcium channels. I have Chewbacca doing uh, calisthenics there. Uh, so he's standing on one hand, which I consider to be calisthenics. And he's using a banana, which contains a lot of calcium. Mm -hmm. to change the channels on this old retro TV calcium channels. Nice, nice. Yeah. yeah uh, I didn't get the vault to get it, but it sort of sticked anyway. Yeah, well, when you have that repetition, you know, and you just got to switch out sodium for calcium, yeah, really, yeah. you can just add something. So I was thinking of, you know, the Terminator kind of image there uh, because of that, what was it, 40 minus 70, 40, something on the previous. Yeah thing. Yep. So I had Reese from uh, Terminator. I think that's what his name was anyway. Um, and the calcium switch, I myself, isn't Superman his name Cal-L in, uh, in, when he's a kid? Uh, Jor-L is his dad. His name is Cal-L. 
So calcium, and I would have him like calculating, like he would take a he would take a the time machine sort of thing or whatever. He would he would be calculating some kind of thing there. Cal L calculating the calcium, and then actual calcium, like a milk bottle, would come out uh, yeah, from the yeah. same image with the the uh, the original Terminator image that I was talking about before. Just add that in. Ah, okay. So you you just couple the uh, couple the images. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's at least a, a possible thing to do because yeah, it's in, in the magnetic memory method world, that's called uh, compounding the principle of compounding. So you okay. can really double down and, you know, this is a different location, so to speak, uh, yep. cause you're, you're here, you're talking about the synaptic gap, right? But nonetheless, yep. even though it's a different location, I could compound it onto this part here of the mind map memory palace and just basically when i when i get to this kind of thing i'm just calling back and that calling back is itself part of effective spaced repetition right it, it's yeah. allowing yeah. yourself to to compare contrast and so forth so you don't have to do it that way but it is an option and uh one is not necessarily going to be better than the other but each person needs to explore and experiment yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes when um, when memorizing anatomy, I really like to stick to these. Um, um, you know, I've learned it from you actually. When when you're reading, like you you kind of uh, get the try to find the the most important things in a chapter, right? And in medicine, that's sometimes hard to get like. 10 keywords out of a chapter because sometimes you have to dive deep and just okay it has to be five five keywords for this process alone yeah yeah and so i sort of change between those two models uh, and this one is really like okay i got this I, I sort of need to have them in order for them to for for me to be able to produce them in an exam setting i think well that's a good point as well i mean Having that division, if it comes down to exams and so forth, and they show you this diagram and you have to say, okay, what is A, B, C, D, and E, then yeah, yeah, yeah. basically separating them out is, is probably a good idea, actually. Yeah. But you can do both. Yeah. Yeah. You just got to, I mean, it's, it's the old Greek saying, know thyself. And <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Obviously, my suggestions are coming from someone who's probably never going to sit for these exams. But um, nonetheless, <laughs> in in our in yeah. our little world, we can we we can uh, see later how I do as our series progresses. You know, I could call back these yeah, things yeah. and see, you know, uh, if if I should have maybe separated them out. But nonetheless, for me, volt gated channels. If it's going to go from go, sodium. Yeah to calcium and then maybe later it goes to some other thing you know that kind of rotation in and out that would be yeah. my default strategy uh but again i'm, I'm not yeah. necessarily sitting for exams so good point awesome so okay calcium rushes into the cell uh that's uh there's a gradient there where there's lots of calcium outside of the cell and there's nothing in it almost nothing in it so it just rushes in through this process called diffusion. Mm. Uh, and uh, if you're a medical student or a nursing student or just in the profession, you will know what that is. <laughs> well, what is, what uh, is elementary. What's your image for diffusion? Or did you get that one for free? Uh, do I, I think I got it for free. Uh, <laughs> no, ah, I have uh, I have an image. And it's, it's sort of an image because it's so... It, it's a bad image, but it's uh, my my D is Dolores from uh, Westward, and she's dropped into uh, a water tank, yeah. um, and you know the fusion is the process where particles go from where there they are many to where they are not so many. So uh, Dolores go is trying to be pulled to where she's not, which if you're a poor person that's hard. Uh, but yeah, it's it's it kind of was this mental. Um, <laughs> it just made me laugh because it was so so poor image for diffusion. And since it made me laugh, it yeah, it sort of sticked. Yeah, that sounds like a good one to me. 
I often for if sounding words, I use Iphigenia. So Iphigenia, what does that mean? What is Iphigenia is a mythological Greek figure. Oh, so it's a name of a of a figure. Good to oh, know okay, yeah. in case you ever come across. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah. for example, just to take another thing completely uh, separate from this, Shakespeare, Sonnet 59. If there be nothing new but that which is hath been before, how are our brains beguiled? Like if comes up a lot in poetry memorization. Yeah. So if a Janiya, I use almost always for if. So if it's diffusion, I, you know, how many people have a name diff or, you know, you know, it would be kind of a little bit difficult. So I might have her listening to like a Def Jam record or uh, I don't know, Dilbert because of that DI sound, right? Like, so she's reading a Dilbert comic or something like that, right? Um, and then what did you say? It's like when something goes from a uh, a filled place yeah. to a place with no, no, yeah, sp yeah. like the space yeah. is empty. High, high particle concentration to less particle concentration. Right. And that concentration gra gradient is what's drives diffusion yeah right oh, okay so yeah oh so there's something about the the lack of the lack of balance that's driving the pull yeah 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 yeah. Oh, and okay. it's it's driven through the the random uh the random uh, motion of the molecules so if you have a lot of molecules in one place they tend to just get to everywhere they can and that's mm. diffusion sort of okay <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> that that I would I would work with something like that. Maybe if a Janiya is reading Dilbert, and you know, yeah. there's there's just not enough Dilbert comics over there, so she starts throwing them uh, at at this particular area. Yeah. Yeah. Especially since the creator of Dilbert has become so controversial, we want to get rid of that stuff as soon as we can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Something cool. like that. I think I have to read some more uh, Dilbert then. Uh, I'm not familiar with it, but. Uh... <laughs> Uh, and also there's fusion and diffusion so if you're really cool you can add some nuclear stuff in there uh oh, right or jazz fusion yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so there's uh, endless potentials yeah i used to yeah use i used to draw a character a lot named fuse less actually you oh, can yeah. see well i won't yeah i'll you show you him yeah i think i think i can get the camera to expose him see that painting right here yeah yeah that's a, a fictional character <laughs> I created many years ago named Dr. Fuse Less. And um, oh, cool. Dr. Fuse Less, he robbed the grave of Harry Houdini and took all of Harry Houdini's teeth and turned them into like a, a Geordie LaForge kind of visor. Anyway, so <laughs> it's a long awesome. story, but awesome. <laughs> uh, Dr. Fuse Less, the name is a joke or a pun on Dr. Faustus. Right. So he's ah. and he, and Dr. Fuse Less has an enemy whose name is Dr. Less A. Fuse. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> these are from uh, That's my, great. my, That's my great. early university days when I used to spend all my free time writing stupid novels because I had so much free time because thanks to mnemonics. Hey, I even awesome. ran a, a, a small press with a guy named Rob Reed and we had time in abundance to print our own books in limited editions and uh some of them feature wow. dr fuse less <laughs> cool and dr less i hope to have uh <laughs> awesome i hope to have free time some uh <laughs> free, well, more free time again soon you don't want to read them they're terrible but <laughs> in any case <laughs> yeah, yeah uh but since we're talking about diffusion yes i think uh it's a really uh, it's an uh, annoying term to learn, but when you understand it, it's super, super useful in anatomy. Mm. And just to go a bit deep into that diffusion, uh, the speed of that is uh, each uh, molecule has a diffusion gradient. So it's it's different for each molecule. But then you have the diffusion gradient times the area. And the, you have the concentration difference, so C1 minus c2 mm -hmm. over like divided by l which is the length so you can see the nerve ending here it's not just a flat or like a finger it, it broadens out to get a big area which means it's 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 made for diffusion right it gets a big area and the synaptic gap 
uh, I've drawn it really wide here, but I think it's right around 10 nanometers. So, so not very large. It's not very large, right? Right. Um, so these here are really tight. And also in the, with the fusion from the blood to the cells, you always have to think about, ah, okay, the area is going to be large and then the distance is really small, so you need a lot of capillaries. There's a lot of area, and that creates a lot of tension and resistance. And if you understand the fusion and that equation, a lot of anatomy, anatomy just sticks way easier because it makes sense. So just wanted to get <laughs> throw that in there. Yeah, it's intense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we can continue with this uh, image here. Um, so calcium rushes in and there are these tiny little bladders in the nerve ending and they senses the calcium and they will be expelled through a process called exocytosis, which is my next uh, mnemonic, exocytosis. Okay, yeah, so that's have, cool. Yeah, yeah, it is exocytosis. Uh, X is hard, but I have um, watched a great show called, called Harvey Birdman. Um, probably no one has ever watched it, but it has this character called X, the Eliminator, which is always trying to kill Harvey Birdman. Um, and he has this death ray. So then I have X. And uh, Cytosis, I don't know if you watched uh, the Coen Brothers movie, A Serious Man. Um, but there's this Oh, character is Matt Damon called... in that? Matt uh, No, no, I don't think. Ah, I'm not sure, no. No, maybe not. Uh, <laughs> maybe i haven't seen it then yeah there, there's this character called Cy ableman so i got Cy, exo Cy, and then x uses this death ray to start turn Cy ableman into a toast exocytosis that's my exocytosis so let's talk about x um x. xenophon xena the warrior princess xerxes oh ah, yeah Professor X Xerxes. from X Men, uh, Malcolm X, lots of lots of uh, X's, xylophones. Um, xylophones. But you know yeah. what I usually use for X, like in yeah. Omnium Expatendorum Prima Espenti in Qua Perfecti Boni Forma Consistent Expatendorum. I use Wolverine a lot because not only is Wolverine an X Man, but I use his claws a lot. So for exocytosis. I would probably have him, well, Cyclops is also an X-Man, right? I think is the guy with the the eyes, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Or maybe I would yeah. just have a Cyclops from the Odyssey, you know, so exocytosis, yeah. and he's taking the sight of, cy of a Cyclops, and so the Cyclops is fighting back with his toes, right? <laughs> so yeah, yeah. I think that may be what I would use. Yeah, and actually Wolverine could use his claws to like split the cyclops open and then through exocytosis something could expel from cyclops. That and when the body that has been in cut in half falls, it falls in the form of an X. And that gets Wolverine yeah. really excited <laughs> so that he cuts <laughs> off his own toes and throws it into the fire <laughs> that he makes out of this new X-shaped, you know, what would you call that when you when you cut somebody in half? Like you got decapitation if you take off their head, but oof, splitting someone down the center, there's got to be a technical <laughs> term for that. Anyway, he splits yeah. them down the center, the body makes an X, <laughs> and he gets excited that he cuts his own toes off and throws it in there. X, 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 exocytosis. Or, yeah, uh, is that the right word? Exocytosis? An, uh, exocytosis, yes. Okay. <laughs> so that, that's the process in the cell when it expels something to what we call a vesicle in uh, Norwegian. I'm, I'm not sure about the English words, but it's this sort of bag that's made of the same thing as the cell membrane. Mm -hmm. And it's just transported to the cell membrane and <laughs> part of the membrane and expels whatever was inside. We're missing another possible X mnemonic, which would just be playing a game of X's and O's. Yeah. So, oh, and the wife of Socrates was named Zentipia. <laughs> so there's lots of X opportunities, uh, is what I'm saying. But yeah, okay, so yeah. exocytosis 
And then sickle was what you said? Vesicle. Oh, v vesicle. Yeah, that sounds like a probably a term yeah. used in English also. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, whew. They're through exocytosis, these little uh, purple dots are in the synaptic gap and they're called neurotransmitters. So, Beautiful. neurotransmitters. Um, I have Neo there from the matrix. Right. Um, and then uh, he's a transvestite, so he has boobs. Right. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And he he uh, has these great mittens on, and then he uses the uh, Morse code signals to tap on his breast uh, SOS. So I had got neurotransmittens or transmitter, mm -hmm. and it's also transmitting a signal. So I tried to kind of double down on that image right, there. Right. That's great. That's great. Okay, so is that all the five processes for this one? Yes, it is. Sort of, you sort of just have to know that it opens channels on the other side, the post synaptic membranes. Well, did I? Okay, I thought I had five, and maybe it was six, because uh, the post synaptic membrane is also important. Uh, again, uh, these are not bolt gated sodium uh, channels, these are ligand gated uh, sodium channels in this uh, instance it could be calcium channels it could be potassium channels not so important so but, if uh, this yeah. side is called post synaptic membrane is the other side yeah. presynaptic it is it is okay. yeah post and pre logical membrane yeah. gotta love logic logic yeah. is itself a mnemonic device yeah it is it's, uh, it makes, makes it stick. So this is a process, right, for the nerve to transmit a signal to another nerve. And if you recall the previous uh, figure, uh, this postsynaptic membrane would be a dendrite. Right? Okay. So nerve, this nerve cell could be one of many nerve cells trying to uh, make an exhibitory change here. And there could be others trying to make inhibitory changes. So in this uh, example, you've got positive ions flowing in. Uh, other postsynaptic membranes might have negative ions flowing in. And the sum of these is what is the change in the Volt in the voltage in the cell, and if it reaches the positive, uh, the the threshold potential, then the cell fires. Right, so it's a it's a sum of all the axons who are working through the dendrites and then changing the voltage in the cell body. Okay. <laughs> if I look away, I'm not. Oh. It's not that I'm not paying attention. I'm actually practicing what ha ha Harry Kinney called multiple mentality. So I'm listening oh, to you. you really? Yeah, I'm listening to you and I'm I'm reciting a memorized deck of cards and testing that wow that I have uh remembered it. And so far I've gotten through <laughs> this many cards correctly. You'll have to take my word for it, but <laughs> uh, unless yeah. you want to listen to me recite them all. But uh <laughs> I, I like to go through wow. my deck every so often and, and make sure that I have recalled it correctly. That's uh that's awesome. Uh I'll uh, bow to the champ. Wow. <laughs> All right. So okay. That's quite a so, quite a info dump and a lot of mnemonic examples. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> so sorry about that. For <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, not we're, sorry. We're we're just laying out the mnemonic examples like there's no tomorrow <laughs> here. And you know, just yeah, realize yeah. that it's highly personal. The science of active recall shows us that we need to actually make the mnemonics ourselves in order to get the maximum memory benefit. And that's part of why I'm so grateful for you doing this and suggesting it actually, so that there is, you know, more people seeing the demonstration of just how fun and easy it is, you know, but yeah, yeah. I would really nail down that it's not just us. Hey, these are cool examples, but 
urging you, prompting you to learn the magnetic Mary method, to learn how to be your own mnemonic generator, because that's what's going to make it so much stickier. Absolutely. Yeah. It's uh it's it's the best learning strategy I've I've ever used. So. Yeah. It, absolutely. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh to talk again a bit about why, because why is our glue. Um as uh an anesthetist, I wanna sometimes give general anesthesia and I use uh, an agent called propofol or a medicine called propofol. And it's with these medicines, it's a bit unclear exactly where they work, but it's they sort of know it works on the neurotransmitters called GABA. Mm. Uh, and I have a great mnemonic for GABA, but uh, let's wait for that. And GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So my medicine makes the inhibitory neurotransmitters stick to the postsynaptic membrane longer and be more effective. So it sort of inhibits most of your nervous system generally, I think. Um, and don't take my word for it. Read it yourself uh, if you're uh, interested in it. But uh, that's what I think it does. And the effect is what we call sleep, but it's actually deep sedation. So, sorry, so what's that word? It's not sleep, but it's actually what? Deep sedation. Oh, deep sedation. Ah, okay, yeah. Yeah. And the difference is that sleep is an active process with the restitution and learning and uh, dreaming. And you can have dream during narcosis, but uh, it's not all the healthy benefits from sleep. Right. That's interesting. So propofol, this is the one that's spelled P-R-O-P-O-F-O-L. I just was searching that up so I could uh, see how it's spelled. What mnemonic did you use for that? Actually, that one just sort of stuck with me. I tried to I tried to uh, make a good one with Pippin, and nah, sort of didn't work. <laughs> right. But I have a great one for the GABA receptors uh, or the GABA neurotransmitter. Okay. So Gandalf is my G. Again, Lord of the Rings is my... Uh, I grew up <laughs> with Lord of the Rings. So Gandalf is playing basketball, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, he's dunking, and then Propofol comes along and makes him just stick to the basket, mm. that no one else can dunk or play basketball. So he inhibits the basketball game. Ah, right, right. That's a good one. Um, so for Propofol, I I don't know enough yet, but isn't one of these moves pronation? Yeah, yeah. Is it this one? Uh, okay, supination is when you're making a soup cup. So right. pronation Supination. will be that one. Pronation, yeah. right. Okay, so, you know, that kind of thing, if you know it, I, I'm just learning it now here, but pr pronation, supination. So pronation is now you could use your body a little bit to, to think of propofol. Um, and then... You know, things try to find words that are like that. It's like airplane propeller, university yeah. professor. Um, maybe it's not as related, but a proctor, uh, a proponent, uh, you know, those kinds of things. And for yeah. me, the first thing that comes to mind is there used to be this band. I can't think of the name of any of their songs, but there was a band called Propane when I was a teenager. Uh, and they were not not that obscure they 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 had a quite a big presence in heavy metal anyway um so propane i would think of and then there was also a pastor called peter popoff and for that foal part fol sometimes a horse in english is called a foal like a, a younger horse um and also you might think of just changing it a little bit like tinfoil hat kind of conspiracy theorist so if you had like a professor yeah, yeah of you know conspiracy theories that wears a tinfoil hat now you get this propofol and then you could use pronation like the back of your hand as as a kind of additional prompt or have that character pronating uh and this is where you can use that compounding thing again because yeah. 
you know, I'm only just learning this, so I might make a mistake here, but is it not the case that pronation or sorry, the radial bone is this side with yeah. your, you know, thumb up, up. this yeah. way. And then you have uh, the ulna is the down one, right? So, yeah. you know, you can, you can compound that on. So if you already know your, your, your radius or your radial and you're doing pronation, you know, and then you can, you can think, well, propofol has an R in it. So the professor would be more towards your, your, your radius. Anyway, th those kinds of things yeah, yeah, is how yeah. you can compound and just keep using your body as the memory palace. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's probably what I'm going to do to memorize propofol as, you know, being a, sed a sedative or an anesthetic, I guess. Uh, it, yeah, would you call yeah. it a sedative or just a, an anesthetic? Ooh, you would call it, oh, I should know this. <laughs> uh, an you need it for your test. You yes, I do, I do, I do. Uh, okay, so an anesthesia is divided into three parts. It was gives you the sleep, uh, and it's the uh, pain part of it, which is analgesia. Amnesia is also the sleep, and then you have the muscle relaxation that makes you not move, right? So, an anesthetic, it's probably it's sort of embarrassing to not know this uh, at the tip of my tongue right now, but. Could be pain this is agents. pain yeah. is a mnemonic prompt to go back. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> this will annoy me. <laughs> I get it easy on these sessions because I'm allowed to make mistakes by just uh, being the guy who's casually learning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got a test coming up. Yeah, but learning is a process. Anyway, I'm seeing it here as an induction agent. Um, oh yeah. So that's the term uh, that's just coming up on Google, but. Uh, awesome. Yeah, 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 we use it. Okay, yeah. Induction, Do you have to know the marketing in, uh... name as well? Like the the commercial name? Yes, yes. So we uh, get. We, we, we just add on. The generic name. Yeah, I'm seeing here uh, Diprovan. I see. Oh, yeah. Okay. Diprovan. So. Might be. Yeah, we use. Uh, uh, market uh, uh, a medicine called it's called propofol in Norway, so yeah, it's very right. very easy. Yeah, right. In any but, case, uh, these are ni nice mnemonic questions. So if you're using your hand or something in pronation for propofol, and then you got to add diprovan, you know you could if it's already yeah. in your thumb because for whatever reason because you're using that R for the radius or the radial bone, then now you can add diprovan, and you could you could have that professor. Like Professor X, maybe you know, dipping into a van to to sedate himself, <laughs> this sort of thing, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So now you're just making you're making that you're using compounding to just get more out of less, basically. Or dipping with the air of Vincent Van Gogh, and uh, dipping in a dip saucer, getting it. Yeah, yeah, lots of options. Yeah. Ah, yeah, <laughs> it probably just gets confused with the air. Yeah. <laughs> Well, confusion is uh, itself a prompt to uh, study more and uh, <laughs> yeah. use mnemonics yeah. more. Yeah. Okay, so this is, uh, yeah, that's an example of uh, propofol. And then we got an example from uh, local anesthetics. Yes. Yeah. Some of the neural, neural uh, anatomy there. Yeah. Did it make sense? I think it makes sense. I mean, this is a great walkthrough. I'm I'm learning a lot, getting a lot of practice in imagining how these cells work and coming up with fun mnemonics, practicing that mnemonic skill. People watching, feel free to use the comment section to practice your own mnemonics. And yeah, it's not just to create more examples, but also, you know, the more you use your hands and stuff to start processing, the more it's going to become an automatic behavior. Uh, what becomes increasingly strategic becomes increasingly automatic. So I would just, you know, increase, take every opportunity to increase the strategic ways that you develop mnemonics. And uh, it also helps our channel out here, of course, uh, if people are leaving comments, but it's really for your benefit at the end of the day, because if you aren't taking that initiative, like Ivar, you know, you're not going to be able to remember as much as you could as quickly as you could 
and uh, and achieve the goals of passing these these exams. Mm. And uh, can I add to? Um, I, I really like the to train remon um, mnemonics outside of studying, just five minutes a day uh, mm -hmm. with the software that you sent me. Right, right. Because it really, I've just been doing it for two weeks now since the last time we spoke, and it, it really upped my game. Just trying to separate the process with, okay, I'm I'm just practicing my my ABC list of celebrities. And practicing making images with them and then it becomes kind of fun and when you then try to do it on your keywords it's it's super easy but if you're trying to be consistent with the practice and taking notes and then you i sort of at least uh, i worry a lot is okay is my notes good enough is this the keywords i really need do i really have a good structure to make a memory palace and all these what if what if what if they come in the way of, of staying consistent and practicing. So for the last two weeks, I've been really consistent uh, and it's really helped my game. All right. So Eva is talking about International Association of Memory software. So just search that up on Google, International Association of Memory, really good for practice. I use it every, a couple of times a year just to, just to take on the heat of having a timer on and just memorizing material. I think you said you're, you're up to 28 words and, you know, 25 25 yep yeah you'll 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 double that uh before you know it lots of lots and lots of practice and just you know one thing that i like to do is just to always practice relaxation before doing it and let it fly and then just don't judge always get curious like it, when you miss something it's like what 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 was happening there and it's it's really really powerful yeah it is and that's actually a really important key when you're studying as well just to allow yourself to not understand it before you memorize it and it sort of becomes this uh, sticky glue paper for like this fly paper you used to catch flies mm -hmm. it becomes that for knowledge when you you have a, a mnemonic and uh, can't figure out what what did i mean with that keyword and it becomes super magnetic for me uh, when you go back and you're like, oh, ah, this is what I meant. And you adjust the mnemonic and poof, it sticks. Well, Ivar, this has been a blast. Thank you so much for taking us through this and sharing your mnemonics and letting me play mnemonics as well. The game of creating and assigning mental imagery. And I will uh, review this myself just to see what I can get with with no particular consequence what i can get into the, the long-term memory but it, it's been a blast uh so thank you very very much thank you it's been uh, great to uh, to do this with you really fun i really uh yeah it really develops my my uh, mnemonics game so thank you thank you a lot and the plan is to to do more episodes yeah yeah we have cool. a sort of loose plan uh, with that yeah uh, awesome. i have an exam coming in uh, four weeks so uh, there'll be plenty of mnemonics made <laughs> excellent so thanks everybody hit that thumbs up if you haven't already get subscribed if you are new here and we'll see you next time on this channel devoted to medical mnemonics